Hi everyone, uh, Dr. Mills here. So this is just part two of the, the video that I made already on the um, SIDH. Um, I did highlight in that video that I was going to talk about the what happens to the plasma osmolarity. Now just a recap again. SIDH is syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone production. And as I already indicated, it is a, it's a syndrome, a, a constellation of symptoms that occurs when you have excessive ADH being produced by the pituitary gland, the posterior pituitary gland, all right, in the brain. And there are a number of factors that can trigger that, uh, one of which is a tumor in the posterior pituitary leading to overproduction of the ADH hormone, which when produced would go to, his, to different sites, precisely different receptors in the kidney nephrons, and they can act on these receptors, these aquaporine V receptors, V2 receptors, and then mainly what they do is that they trigger um, retention of water. So you don't have fluid loss, you don't have water loss in the body. Instead, you have fluid being retained in the body, which would which would create a false impression of a hypovolemic status, but it's not hypovolemic. It's not hypervolemic because even though excess water is being retained, as mentioned already, this excess water increases the plasma volume, increases the blood volume, but increases the venous return and the blood return to the right atrium and that causes a stretch of the right atrium. The stretch of the right atrium will produce, will lead to the production of the atrial nitriuretic peptide ANP and the function of this nitriuretic peptide nitriuresis is for excretion of sodium. And so basically as sodium is being excreted because of the ANP produced, the sodium takes along with it the water that was retained. So the water retained is being eventually excreted accompanying sodium. But there is something that will cause between the phase of water retention and water excretion. What happens is that when excessive ADH leads to excessive water retention, this water that's been retained has a dilutional effect on the, on the sodium in plasma. So because excess water has been retained, this dilutes the concentration of sodium in plasma. So you're gonna have a low amount of a tr transiently for a while you're gonna have a low amount of plasma sodium so that's what we call a dilutional hyponitremia hypo means low and nitremia means low sodium in the blood so you're gonna have low amount of sodium in the blood because of the dilutional effect that has occurred because of this excess water that has been retained so again SSADH excess retention of water leading to dilutional hyponitremia so to, and to further, you know, to further worsen this low sodium in the body, you also have the ANP being produced, which leads to flushing out of the already diluted sodium. So you still have more sodium being lost, taking water along with it. So the water retained is not lost. So the net water, so the net, um, the net gain is zero. Water retained is water is equal to water loss. But in addition, you're losing sodium. So you're gonna have a hyponitremia. Water retained is also being lost. So the volumic status of the patient will be euvolemic. All right, so now you're having a hyponitremic euvolemia, which means low plasma sodium in a normal volumic state. And the reason for this I've been explained. The euvolemia is because the water retained is equal to water loss. And the, hypovoli the, the hyponitremia is because of First of all, the dilutional effect on sodium, followed by the natriuretic effect, that's the loss of sodium because of the ANP. So those two factors account for the hyponitremic state in the euvolemic patient. And remember, this sodium that is being lost is being lost and excreted from the body along with water through what? Urination. So you're going to have an increased fraction of sodium being excreted so the fractional excretion of sodium is increased. What this just means is if you were to do a, an analysis of the patient's urine, you're going to find out that there's a high amount of sodium in the urine. So remember when you have a lot of ions in a solvent, we talk about osmolarity, all right? So you find that in these patients, because of the dilutional hyponitremia, the plasma osmolarity in this patient is going to be low. The reason why the plasma osmolarity is low is because you have reduced solutes. There's less sodium in plasma because more are being flushed out into urine. So this sodium being flushed out into urine will increase the amount of sodium in the urine. 
So in an SIDH patient, they're going to have low plasma osmolarity. That means a less concentrated amount of ions in the plasma, but a higher concentration of these ions, these sodium ions in the urine, so that we have a high urine osmolality. The, the cause of this difference, the low plasma osmolarity and the high urine osmolarity, is attributed to the amount of sodium, the less amount of sodium in plasma and the more amount of sodium in the urine. So if you did a blood test in this patient, you did a lab test in this patient, the blood serum level will show hyponatremia, less amount of sodium in the blood. A urine test will show high amount of sodium in the urine. So in the blood, you have hyponatremia. You would also have low plasma osmolarity. So probably the plasma osmolarity will be less than 270. In the urine, there will be high urine osmolality. Okay? And the fractional excretion of sodium will be high. There will be high amount of sodium in the urine. So that's really what happens. Um, with regards to how do we treat this, um, how to treat it will depend on what's the cause. Because there are different causes of SIDH, alright? If it's a tumor surgery, get rid of the tumor, remove the tumor from the posterior pituitary. Um, that's surgical intervention, but that's probably the last resort. Um, initial things you can do is, because the problem here is too much water retention, you can appreciate that you would want to reduce the amount of water that this patient consumes. Because even though their volumic status is euvolumic, there is still an ongoing problem, which is water is being retained. So you don't want to exaggerate the problem by encouraging a higher amount of fluid intake in each day. So you want to cut down the amount of fluid intake each day. So that's one, reduction of free water intake. The second thing you want to do is, um, because the problem in this case is excessive ADH being produced by positive being produced by the posterior pituitary, this excessive ADH is acting on the aquaparin receptors, all right, triggering them to, to retain a lot of water. So you want to counteract the effect of that ADH. So you want to give an ADH blocker. You want to give a medication that will block the action, the action of ADH at this receptor site. So you can give a drug known as dimeclocycline. So dimeclocycline is a medication that can be given and it's, it's an antagonist of ADH, so it blocks the action of ADH. Then, meaning that if you give a patient, so in, in a patient who who had SIDH, the amount of ADH in this patient will be high, and the plasma osmolarity will be low because excessive ADH, excessive water retention, dilutional effect of sodium, natriuretic effect on sodium as well, into low plasma osmolarity. If I give this patient dimeclocycline, dimec the meclocycline is going to block the, the action of ADH. So what do I expect 24 hours after administration? If I repeat the blood test in this patient, the ADH level will still be high because the, whatever is producing the ADH, we keep producing it. But the action of ADH at the receptor site is going to be inhibited because of the demeclocycline. So what I would say is that there will be no water being retained. The ADH level is high, but the water being retained is low because there's an antagonistic effect at the receptor site. So no water retained, which means that there will be no dilutional effect on sodium. All right? And there will be, there will be decreased dilutional effect on sodium, and there will be decreased excretion of sodium, which means that there will be a recovery and uptrending of the plasma osmolarity. So pre and post, pre and post dimeclocycline test, pre dimeclocycline, you're going to have high ADH, low plasma osmolarity, all right, and low sodium. Post dimeclocycline, you will still have high ADH, but you're gonna have an increasing towards normal, normal plasma osmolarity, all right, and also near normal sodium level. So, if if dimeclocycline administration corrects the lab results, corrects the sodium level, and corrects the plasma osmolarity, it's a way of telling you that. SIDH is probably what, is what was the problem, all right? So in a patient that is on democlocycline, you can appreciate that because it's blocking the ADH action and water is not being retained, this water will be flushed in urine. So there's a reverse reversal of osmolarity. In this patient, because ADH is not being, is, because ADH action is being blocked and water is not being retained, you're going to have an increase or normal plasma osmolarity, but you will have a reduced urine osmolarity, which is the reversal of the picture in SIDH.
okay so I, I probably said everything so quickly that's because first of all it's kind of late right now I think it's like nine o'clock and I'm really exhausted but I just wanted to just get this video out of the way yeah um so yes um cutting down the amount of free water intake and administration of the mycocycline are two ways to remedy this situation all right and yeah other things that probably can done if there's a tumor and get rid of the tumor as well yeah and in addition some people might take lace diuretic like furosemide elasis to help flush out the amount of water that was retained so laces demycocycline and reduction of free water intake are ways to manage this kind of patient with SIDH and those are things to know and yeah so if you have any comments or any question please leave it below and just like and subscribe to my channel on YouTube Dr. Mills thank you